Uh, let's take a look at different substrates and how they're going to affect our SN2 reaction. Again, remember what we have here is a nucleophile attacking some kind of electrophile from the back. We'll call these substituents A, B, and C. Doesn't really matter, right? You have this backside attack and then breaking of this bond. And so if you're thinking about this nucleophile coming up from the back and attacking it, if, the, if you have a whole bunch of stuff here, if this stuff is really big, your nucleophile is not going to be able to get into that backside. So it's going to block the backside attack. And so we can uh, reasonably think of some reactivities between different types of these organohalides, right? If we think about methyl, that stuff is tiny, and so it's going to be very reactive. If we think about primary, also not too big of a deal to go behind that. If we think about a secondary, more difficult, but still possible. And then if we think about tertiary, it's just going to be way too big to attack. So again, as we go to the left here, we become more reactive towards our SN2 reaction because there's less stuff to block this backside attack. And this tertiary is so bad that it's not gonna happen. So right, we'll write no SN2 there. But all the other ones, it is possible. So let's take a look at a kind of example exception to this. All right, so I have my nucleophile coming in here, and this right here is a primary, so it's reactive, right? And the answer to this is no, it's not reactive, right? You can't just look at what's directly on the halide, but you have to think about the rest of it, right? We have this tert butyl group, and that's simply way too big, right? So this nucleophile, even though it's a primary carbon, um, it cannot do this backside attack. So I want you to know that if you have this specific compound right here with this uh, tert butyl group, it's not going to happen. Now you can ask, what if that tert butyl was an isopropyl? And then you get into the results of, well, yeah, it can happen. Maybe there's some other better things that can happen. You know, depends on your conditions type of thing. But for now, I want you guys to know this chart up here and know that this specific example will not happen. Another thing to note is that uh, if the halogen is connected to an sp2 carbon, there's no SN2. Or it's kind of the same thing, but if this halogen is on your benzene ring, your nucleophile also cannot do this backside attack. So it only happens uh, with a halogen on an sp3 hybridized carbon.